I've met them all. I'm friends with them all. They are also operating against the grain in an, an America that needs to go back to that. Well, the system's tried to put some of them in jail. I mean, I know a lot of those folks don't talk about the stuff that goes on behind the scenes. I don't either, but, uh, you know, these people play hardball, and, and, and some folks can say who are libertarians, well, those folks don't sound libertarian enough to me. It doesn't matter. The globalists, the Democrats, the, the collectivists hate anybody who's conservative, anybody who believes in the individual. And the fact is, those people promote individualism, nationalism, and that's why they've got to be eradicated. Uh, what a horrible world if the system is successful. Matt Drudge, in your gut, in your heart, do you think that humanity is going to be successful and make it the next hundred years? Oh, the hundred years? Well, of course, unless Mother Nature decides. You know, I'm a big fan of letting Mother Nature decide some of this, too. You know, we can't control a lot of this. There is a law to the universe. There just is. There's just a law to the universe. We could have the San Andreas rip tonight. You had nothing to do with that. We could have had that super hurricane that, look what they did to South Carolina, two or 300 miles offshore. Imagine if a Category 5 eyewall went right up the Chesapeake Bay. They could say, well, mankind did that. No, Mother Nature decides. So will we survive? I'm sure we will. What Will we be uh, not allowed to speak as we are today? Well, we'll have it documented that we were allowed to speak that way once. So I, I don't know. Am I optimistic? For myself personally, yes, I'm strong. There's not much they can do. They could laser beam me. They could drone me. They can plutonium me. They could do whatever they wanted. But spiritually, I'm set. I've already got it. So they can't do much. I just wish there was more media that was trailblazing and independent. And this, to me, is a, is a big danger right now in this setup, is you've got these corporations like the New York Times and the Amazon now with the Washington Post and Time Warner and all of them seem to be the same. This is what's frightening. And there's so much news in the course of the day. And the reason I think the Drudge Report has is interesting every morning is it's not exactly the same as you would see elsewhere. And that's because I'm not involved with other people. I'm looking at the world through my eyes, and that's what you're seeing. With bravery and with the ability to do it. Because uh, the ability to do it, what you've created here with one listener one day that went to 10 listeners that went to 50 to now your millions was organically grown. And that's kind of how Earth uh, proceeds. And it usually takes time. You're absolutely right. Uh, looking at the open announcements by the Pope for world government, carbon taxes, looking for Obama, announcing similar things. They've gone from denying this planetary system is being set up to now admitting it. We've got all these key meetings, TPP being agreed on uh, just a few days ago. How is that affecting the people that were brainwashed and told none of this was happening? How are they going to respond now when all of this starts coming to fruition? I've been traveling a lot and I'm seeing a lot of desperation everywhere, a lot of sad desperation. I was just in an airport and even down to this, a woman selling Southwest Airlines credit cards, standing like a robot. Have you signed up yet? Are you a member of the club? It was tragic. This is a mature woman with a beautiful face and life. And I'm like, how did she get there? What has happened to this culture that she's now standing as a robot like this? They are sucking our ability to make uh, uh, an, an income that is compatible with what you need to. So I'm getting a little frightened as I travel. On the other side of it, when I go to New York and I see some of the billionaires, it's the other side, endless. You know, they're fighting over pieces of artwork. It's, it's gotten to the point where the have and the have nots here is breaking. So I And it's the billionaires that are mainly funding the whole leftist redistribution movement because they end up getting the money in corporate welfare and insider deals. It's so sick. I, I, I watched a great film. I don't know if you've seen it yet, but it's uh, The Best of Enemies about Gore Vidal and William F. Buckley. Have you seen that yet? No. You've got to see it. it mm -hmm. And... It shows Gore Vidal arguing, saying the answer. Oh, and by the way, why are we not allowed to have a Gore Vidal, William Buckley anymore in the media scene? Do you see who they hire? Do you see who's hired for the shows? How dull they are? Yes. Dull. Dull as dishwater. They want you to tune out of politics and in entertainment. Yes, but they make it. Where are the flamboyant characters? This is what America desperately needs right now. Flamboyant intellectual characters who can cut different ways uh, and that's just what I'm missing. I'm, I've been fortunate enough to meet some of the greats of this generation. And I've got to tell you, they are there. 
It's just they are suppressed and hidden and they're not hired the way Gore Vidal and Buckley were back a previous generation. They were not afraid of ideas. This generation is frightened of ideas or at least it's being suppressed. Let's throw in in the few minutes we have left. We're about to go to break, and I know you've given us more time than you even said you would. Matt Drudge is our guest, DrudgeReport.com, obviously in studio here in Austin, Texas, visiting a surprise visit, one of the best ever. That's better than the surprise birthday parties I've had. Shifting gears, I don't think that it's Putin's this great angel or this wonderful, perfect person, but our foreign policy is so corrupt, so deceptive, it makes him look good, and nobody's going to back al-Qaeda. I talked about this last Thursday and Friday. And I'll find the article and we'll put it in this video later and put it out as a report. But it was it was Reuters reporting that the White House is angry that um, these airstrikes by the Russians have hit the moderates, al Nusra, which is al-Qaeda in Syria. And then it just went on and they're telling him to stop doing it. And he didn't hit ISIS. But then Putin pointed out, no, that's the bosses of ISIS. That's just their fighters. It's the same group, which is true. But it's Twilight Zone. I can't even believe... I'm reading Reuters, who has writers with a straight face that will just sit there and write articles about how Al-Qaeda is moderate and not bad, and then we criticize Russia for bombing them when they're attacking Russian interest. It's just so bizarre. It seems like that Karl Rove uh, quote where he said, we control reality. I don't think Obama and these guys really control reality. And now we've got John McCain saying, let's go ahead and end Zbigniew Brzezinski and have war with Russia. Let's go ahead and attack the Russian aircraft. I mean, it's crazy town. What do you say to that? Well, I'll, I'll say this. We never even heard of ISIS until recently. And I remember when that name first started coming up. Do you know it was designed to be confused with Daryl Issa? No, I didn't Did know that. Did you know that's what it was? Because Daryl Issa was the enemy at the time of this administration. You know, there would have been a time Obama could have been impeached. And I'm thinking of the IRS scandal most likely. That would have been the one. You get the depositions going. You get the president under oath. You follow the chain. Obama most likely would have been impeached. Boehner decided we're not going there. We're not going to have those cities burn. We're not going to do it. We're not going to impeach Obama. Uh, and so I felt Daryl Issa... That's his name, right? Because I'm getting all ISIL, ISA, ISA, Daryl yes. ISA. I think they were, they came up with the name ISIS to be confused with Daryl ISA. I'm really being honest with you. I remember when the first time Christian Amanpour sputtered out this word ISIS. I'm thinking, where did she get that one? You know, these words are creative. These events are created. Now we act like, oh, ISIS has been around for 20 or 30 years. Says who? It's been around a year and a half. Yeah designed to confuse and then the president going it's not even isis it's isol or ice or isil or is this is dr seuss this is madness so well, I, i'm not sure military... able to follow any of it because when i sit down and look at the news i'm not able to follow the bouncing ball is putin here is obama here where does this one go where i can't follow can you put the pieces together i'm glad you can because i can't Wow. Well, we're going to break here in about a minute and a half, and then I'm going to come back and play a special report. They're going to go into the fourth hour, being hosted by one of our co-hosts today. But, Matt, in the two minutes we've got left, it's amazing to have you here. What else do you think is front and center in the universe? In the last two minutes here, what do you want to say uh, to the audience and to the dinosaur media uh, that is going to uh, gleefully try to edit this and chop this up uh, and, I guess, use it for their funeral pyre? Well, they're welcome to. Again, they've got no control over the situation. None. No control. No control over me, sorry. Zero. I wanted to th congratulate you. You one of the and people don't really talk about this. You are one of the first to stream 24 hours a day. And I think the reason I was drawn into InfoWars was because of this streaming. Uh, this is a profound break that you did to allow the audience to hear you at any time, to make it available at any time from anywhere, looping, looping, looping until the next broadcast. This is a profound thing you did. I don't think that's recognized enough in the industry. I'm just talking shop, top, shop talk here for a second. That was big because what you're seeing with the AM dial now, and I'm not besmirching any stations that are carrying this right now, but some of these ratings are frightening. Some of these ratings in these major cities are frightening. I'm talking about half the listeners generally overall for every uh, talk host. Some of them are down a half, a half in one year. Something is going on, but you broke through with this 24-hour looping, always available on my happiest nights. Take I'm sitting break. here and I'm listening to you from wherever I am in the world. Looping, 
Getting it, getting it, getting it. And the guests. This is a profound shift. Available anytime from anywhere. Well, that was, that was like, you, Alex. That, that was, was a like big one. 12 years ago. I, I said, why do we just send the stream out once uh, and, and then wait for a podcast to come up before they even called it podcast, which is an MP3? So organically again. Yet again, another organically grown decision that changed the media landscape. Well, sure, and I said, why not just have, I don't want to just have, because I was one of the first, people were doing this 20 years ago, Limbaugh was probably the first, with a little, you know, pod cam, took a photo every minute or something. I said, why don't we just put cameras in here so I can show people articles, show them photos, show them books, and even show them video clips, and then we'll start streaming it. And, and by the way, Limbaugh was genius for doing that because he bypassed broadcast. He didn't have to hook up with a Fox or a CNN to show him in real time. He was able to bypass that. And I think there was some cams for radio shows before that. Sure. But he did it on the larger scale. But what you did by breaking the mold, by breaking the mold, whatever you said that day, like, why don't we loop it? I can't tell you how that's changed. Well, and also, I, would, I would say the majority of your listeners are, have, and will discover you through the looping and the broadcast because now we can drive around and listen to you without the streaming, even though it seems like the streaming is what, what the, where things are going. I got to say, when you broke the egg there, when you cracked the egg, that was a big one. That was a Stanley Kubrick moment of the bone going up, what you did with that one. So that was Well, a big I don't one. think it's as big as the bones you've been throwing up that turn into the spaceships, but I tell you, it's amazing to just have the diverse audience that tunes in to hear me babble Speak of the devil, like people like Stanley Kubrick's daughter and folks that have popped up too. And you're like, you check it out and go, this is really Stanley Kubrick's daughter that helped make some of his films. It just blows oh, and your by mind. By the way, if Stanley Kubrick was alive, can you imagine? Can you imagine where he would have gone? He would have done some great work. Oh. We're missing the Hollywood push too. Where's the greatness coming out of Hollywood? They want it dumbed down. I've talked to top enough Hollywood. Of the, enough of the Martian crap. Tell us something, telling something big and real and profound as Kubrick would have on a human level, on a human level. Well, I'm not allowed to say what I was told about Kubrick, but let me say it was obvious from his films he would he was be on board with us. He was. You know, Spielberg keeps going back to World War II. I mean, enough already. Let's <laughs> let's get focused. I look at a P.T. Anderson, and I don't know. It's kind of gone into a marijuana cloud for me. Where are the artists who are challenging this generation like Kubrick did? So that's another topic separately. But anyway. well, we're going to break in one minute. We're going to hear John Bounds' report. Come back and, and who's hosting the fourth hour today? I'm so. Thunderstruck that I, David Knight's got a bunch coming up. And obviously, we need to get clips of this epic interview, play those, and put those out on InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. And Matt, how, how fast do you think? Here's what's crazy. Five years ago, I cared if mainstream media wrote stories against us, or I cared if I was on Nightline or something. You've been in more big stuff than I have. Now it doesn't even do anything when I'm on those shows. That's why I know that they don't mean anything. And so we should end with this. You were the guy who tweeted. Uh, at least from what I saw, at Piers Morgan three years ago, or two and a half years ago, to say, have Alex Jones on, debate him. Matchmaker, yeah, behind the scenes, people don't know this about me, I'm a matchmaker behind the scenes, that I've had the ability to make some deals happen and do some things behind the scenes. Now, I've never met Piers Morgan, but I do believe that tweet that day did lead to that. You're right. Well, no, they told me in his office, they said, what do you think of Matt Drudge's idea because they got my cell phone number and called me because CNN had it, and I said... Which ended up being the most dramatic moment on CNN in a generation. So, they admit that. They have votes and say that. That's why they need to hire people away from 6th Avenue just to look at the scene. I remember once saying to Charlie Rose, why, why aren't you have more conservatives on it? And he says, who? And, I, you know, there's a whole list of them. Why are they limiting themselves? Because you would say it's a, you know, it's a contrived plan to limit but I still think to make provocative programming, you've got to have different points of view, a la the Buckley and uh, Vidal, uh, Gore Vidal. Where is that in this culture? It's missing. I get it from InfoWars. Uh, I get it from other places, too, mainly talk radio. Talk radio seems to be the driving force of this culture, at least in uh, spoken word. Uh, I'm not getting it from uh, television that much. I'm just not. Uh, where are the intriguing television shows? I mean, you could say Homeland. You can say some of these others. Okay, yes, but where are the real dynamic things that are pushing? Where well, let's expand on that. Uh, Piers Morgan had a ratings boost of about 30 40% for two weeks after that. Then it went down, steadily declined, and they got rid of him. CNN knows that if they put my commentary on or your commentary or others, tens of millions would tune in to watch it. They know that. They have to control the narrative because it's an agenda, even if it's self-defeating and destroying them. So where do you think that ends up going? Them attempting to censor us. Well, it all depends if the sick Americans get, get unsick. That's all. That's all you just have to do. Because if you get well, 
if you get well, you're not that interested in what Anderson Cooper is saying about things. You're just